we shall wrap up this discussion on the ideal Bose gas. Uh, but before that, uh, let us uh, discuss a few relevant things uh, which are uh, namely the discontinuity of the specific heat across TC. Uh, while I thought that this could be a part of a tutorial, but then I thought that it involves uh, quite uh, you know intricate calculations. So, let me at least show the steps. Then we will talk about the summary and some experimental aspects of BEC. And um, then finally, we will do black body radiation which is uh, derivation of Stefan's law and finally, uh, the sound waves or the specific heat due to phonons. Okay. So, uh, discontinuity in specific heat So, we will show that uh, the specific heat undergoes a discontinuity at t equal to Tc or across the transition and for that we will have to take the full uh, expression for the specific heat that we have taken uh, or rather derived yesterday and uh, it was uh, this G 5 by 2 Zf uh, divided by G 3 by 2 Zf and uh, minus 9 over 4. Uh, G 3 by 2 Z f and G half Z f. And uh, this is the expression for complete expression for specific heat. This is valid uh, at uh, large temperature as well as uh, very small temperature below T c and at T c. Uh, it is just the uh, this behavior of these uh, G functions or the Bose Einstein integrals they change. Um, in fact, between 0 and T c they are independent uh, of uh, Z f where Z f is close to 1. Now, at large temperatures they in fact uh, fall off which is what we have uh, shown. So, uh, for T less than T c uh, we have C v equal to uh, 15 over 4 uh, n k uh, T over T c whole to the power 3 by 2 and then we have this zeta 5 by 2 and zeta 3 by 2. So, if you call this as equation 1 and this as equation 2. So, this is the uh, specific heat where uh, we have put Z f equal to 1 and then hence we have uh, sort of uh, substituted all these expressions. And uh, remember that uh, the last one that is G half at 1 is uh, infinity. So, the last term drops out and one has this uh, form for this uh, uh, the temperature dependence as uh, going as t to the power 3 by 2. So, um, above uh, T c of course, it is still given by this equation 1 and um, uh, for the explicit temperature dependence uh, for temperatures above T c we need to solve this equation. Okay. Now, um, for that uh, what we need is that we need some virial expansion of uh, of these G 3 by 2 and 5 by 2 uh, which are uh, there in uh, Pathria. We will not go into details of that rather uh, we will write down these expressions uh, which are the expansions of these virial, um, virial expansions of this Bose Einstein integral which is gamma minus half root over of Z f plus uh, zeta of 3 by 2. Uh, so, we are just trying to calculate uh, for uh, T uh, greater than T c. In fact, what we are interested in is that T equal to T c plus which means just above T c. And uh, these are the expansions or the expressions that would be used and this is a minus 3 by 2 uh, Z f to the power 3 by 2 and then we have a uh, minus uh, Z f minus of Z f and then we have this as 3 by 2. Okay. So, let us call this equation as 3 a and 3 b. The proof of these are, uh, are not given here, but they are um, like this virial expansion of the uh, b integrals. Okay. So, uh, if we get this or say it is given to you uh, and then uh, we have to just keep in mind that gamma half is equal to minus 2 root pi 
uh, and a gamma 3 by 2 or rather minus 3 by 2 is equal to 4 root pi by 3. And uh, these are all what are needed for us to calculate uh, the specific heat for T uh, just greater than Tc. So, what we get is the following. So, for T greater than Tc, T is equal to Tc plus say for example and this is equal to um, uh, N over V uh, lambda cube is equal to. So, this I write down the number equation. So, that is the number equation. Uh, so, N by V uh, into lambda cube equal to G 3 by 2 Z F. Uh, and uh, this is equal to gamma uh, minus half root over of Zf and uh, plus of the zeta 3 by 2. Um, so, uh, now we can find out uh, this equation to uh, get Zf uh, that is the fugacity and we have actually plotted the uh, this fugacity uh, variation of fugacity with um, you know temperature and uh, this is given by the root over of Zf equal to uh, this zeta 3 by 2 divided by 2 root over of pi and we have 1 minus Tc over T whole to the power 3 by 2. So, that is the uh, expression that we have. Uh, so, we can term this as 4 and this as 5. So, that is the expression for uh, fugacity. Uh, so, now we will use in order to get the discontinuity at Tc, we will use the u expression which is nothing but 3 by 2 n k t uh, g 5 by 2 um, z f divided by g 3 by 2 z f. So, the last part that we did that is a calculation of this z f. So, one gets the um, expression for uh, z f as a function of t. Um, which we have plotted earlier, but we have not uh, derived an explicit expression. Uh, so, this gives you an explicit expression for this. Um, zeta 3 by 2 is constant, it is a known value and then everything else is a known value. So, this T c by T or T by T c it behaves like this. Okay? So, now we can use this expression uh, for these ratio of the two Bose-Einstein integrals as uh, this is G 5 by 2 Z f by G 3 by 2 Z f um, is equal to this 5 by 2 uh, divided by 3 by 2 uh, plus 2 uh, zeta of 5 by 2 uh, root over pi Z f uh, and then uh, we have this uh, 3 by 2. Uh, whole square. Uh, so, this is square of that and uh, plus a 4 uh, 5 by 2 pi by uh, 3 by 2 whole square uh, minus zeta of 3 by 2 uh, divided by zeta of uh, 3 by 2. Um, and we have a Z f here. So, we can write a Z f here. Okay. So, that is the expression for this ratio that you see there and once we get this ratio let us call it as equation 7 and we can put it in um, equation 6 here. Uh, so, uh, we can put 7 in 6 in order to get u and uh, once we get u we can actually eliminate uh, Z f using 5 and 7. So, uh, put uh, Z f from 5 uh, in equation 7, uh, then you do not see a Z f there and then uh, you can put it back into and then put it back into equation 6. Okay, so, that is the plan. And uh, then you can take a temperature derivative and uh, this gives you a Cv which is equal to a Nk. You have a, a 9 by 2 zeta 5 by 2 zeta 3 by 2 uh, minus 3 eighth um, zeta 3 by 2 
whole square divided by pi um, plus uh, 9 over 4 and uh, zeta 5 by 2 zeta 3 by 2 minus 3 over 8 this is actually 8 3 over 8 and um, you have uh, zeta 3 by 2 square over pi and this is with the T c over T whole to the power 3 by 2 and plus a last term which is zeta 3 by 2 whole square divided by pi minus 3 zeta 5 by 2 divided by zeta 3 by 2 uh, into T c by T whole cube. The expression is quite long and um, it has obtained uh, by taking a derivative of the internal energy that is written here in equation 6 and with all the substitutions of all this g 5 by 2, g 3 by 2 and then replacing z f from there and then taking a time derivative there. So, basically uh, this is the expression for, for C v at t equal to T c plus. Okay. So, this is just above uh, T c. So, that we need to know the discontinuity at T c. Okay. So, a uh, del C v del T um, and this is at T equal to T c minus which we have already found that is the T c minus. So, this is a T c minus in equation 2 and uh, the T c plus is this equation which let us call it as equation uh, 8 is equation 8 minus del C v uh, del T at T equal to T c plus this is equal to if you do a simplification of all this, this becomes a uh, uh, zeta 3 by 2 whole square divided by some 16 pi and n k over T c and uh, whatever it is, it is a constant. Okay. Uh, you know, so if you plug in all these values, etc. So if you simplify this number, this becomes 3.6658 into n k over T c. Okay, so that's the discontinuity, and so uh, the specific heat is continuous across the transition, but the uh, derivative of the specific heat is discontinuous, as it's clear from the kink that we have uh, seen there. Okay. So, this just uh, I mean it is not very important, but uh, what it says is that uh, in this particular case uh, in spite of this being a second order phase transition because we were able to define an order parameter which are the condensed densities and all that, uh, we still have uh, this uh, specific heat to be a continuous and um, it does not involve any latent heat uh, the transition from a gaseous phase to a uh, condensed phase does not involve a latent heat and hence it is a uh, it is a second order phase transition. All right. So, uh, we will uh, now uh, do a little bit of uh, uh, summary of these uh, things uh, that is the Bose-Einstein condensation just to remind you of a few things that we have done and we will also do the experimental aspects, but just uh, do a bit of summary uh, which we have done uh, is just you know it is very clear though I would sort of state it anyway that uh, this is a condensation in the momentum space. So, uh, k equal to 0 states are macroscopically occupied. Okay, which was very clear from the velocity plots that we have shown earlier that uh, at uh, uh, sort of uh, you know v x equal to 0 or v y equal to 0 or whatever v z equal to 0, it is in a two dimensional uh, sense. Um, the atomic density is really large for these k x equal to 0, k y equal to 0 or v x equal to 0, v y equal to 0 and so on. So, that tells you that uh, these are the states that are macroscopically occupied and this really is not a condensation that is seen in the real space, but it is in the momentum space. 
and of course very importantly uh, the particles are non interacting. So, if I go back to the way we started uh, this uh, studying Bose-Einstein condensation, you would remember that uh, the density of states in 3D was going as epsilon to the power half and uh, we said that look I mean epsilon equal to 0 uh, comes with no weight at all or no density of states at all, which means that is it that, that it cannot uh, handle um, uh, particles in that state, but uh, that is the most important state at low temperature. And hence, we have separated out the contribution of this epsilon equal to 0 state from the epsilon not equal to 0 state and then uh, we have done this discussions uh, thereafter. Okay. So, um, and uh, with the uh, you know premise that uh, these are non-interacting particles and this is given by this h, h cross square k square over 2 m and uh, when we talk about epsilon equal to 0, we really talk about the k equal to 0 state that we are uh, you know that shows this condensation phenomenon. And um, of course, uh, the helium 4 we have discussed that uh, it came very close uh, to uh, the, the transition temperature is about 2 uh, it is like 3.13 Kelvin uh, according to a Bose-Einstein condensate if you put all these values of m. We have shown that, uh, but the actual transition temperature is about 2.17 Kelvin and so on, okay. it is close to that. So, which means that uh, this only differ by a degree and so what could be happening is the, the Bose-Einstein condensation in helium atoms and it turned out that it is not uh, as simple as that because there are the interaction effects in helium atom cannot be ignored, in fact they are quite strong. And um, because they are strong, uh, this is not really a phenomena that can be ascribed or rather uh, you know assigned as Bose-Einstein condensation and later on uh, Landau and uh, Feynman and Tidza, they have worked a lot on these things and then finally there was an outcome that this is a, a superfluid state which flows with uh, you know if you put that uh, helium atoms below that transition temperature they lose all viscosity. So, uh, you know if they flow into uh, uh, if there is a laminar flow through a tube uh, they would not stick to the walls of the tube it is completely uh, friction less and uh, viscosity less that is kind of a state. Uh, anyway, it is not a Bose-Einstein condensation that was uh, that was somewhat clear. Now, we are talking about Bose particles. So, what kind of particles are uh, Bose particles? Are they there in nature and so on? Uh, yes, they are there in nature. So, we are talking about actually bosonic atoms and uh, sometimes we can uh, you know the, the common uh, candidates can be uh, say alkali atoms. Okay. They are monovalent ones, so they, they should have in principle fractional spins or uh, half integer spins and now that cannot be half integer spins are not uh, bosons. So, uh, what exactly are we uh, you know looking for uh, as bosonic particles that would undergo as uh, uh, I mean Bose-Einstein condensation. Now, what can happen is that um, uh, these atomic spins are so f let us call it as an atomic spin uh, and this atomic spins are uh, combinations of say uh, for example, the nuclear spin and j which is the electronic spin. So, I am talking about the spin angular momentum and f is equal to i plus j and uh, so uh, f has a range from um, i plus uh, okay i plus j i plus j to i minus j okay and the mod of that Okay. So, uh, now for this uh, monovalent alkali atoms, uh, 
uh, such as for example, uh, rubidium, uh, sodium, uh, lithium, uh, lithium and uh, all these things etcetera. Okay. Um, it was first uh, seen in rubidium atoms. Uh, so, we have this j equal to uh, nothing but s uh, angular uh, the l is equal to 0 here is half and uh, we also have i equal to 3 by 2. Uh, so, f becomes equal to 1 or 2. Okay. So, this is the uh, you know the atomic spin that we are talking about and that is why they are bosons. Okay. But uh, you understood that uh, we had to combine the electronic spin and the nuclear spin and the nuclear effects for them to become uh, you know uh, comprehensible or for them to show up in experiments we really need uh, the hyperfine scale to come into picture which means that the temperature has to be extremely low and because we want the temperature to be very low of the order of uh, as you saw that of the order of 100 nano kelvin or so uh, it took a very long time for these condensates to uh, be uh, to be made uh, and this Bose Einstein condensation to be achieved. Okay. So, uh, there are uh, many techniques of cooling that one uh, can actually think of and uh, though it is not a part of this statistical mechanics course because uh, those are cooling techniques and so on and then uh, there are a number of cooling such as. Uh, so, let me just uh, tell you a little bit. Uh, one is called as a, a magnetic evaporative cooling. And uh, maybe the laser cooling etcetera and so on and then this laser cooling actually uh, won a Nobel Prize this technique itself uh, for uh, Stephen Chu, uh, Kohentanoji and Phillips. Um, so, uh, this uh, you uh, target two laser beams counter propagating laser beams towards an atom and the atom actually uh, the momentum effective momentum of the atom the moving atom of course. Uh, that goes down and uh, you can actually slow down the atom significantly and that would lead to uh, you know the cooling phenomena. And this magnetic evaporative cooling can be done by using some anti Helmholtz coil. So, what we mean is that uh, if you remember this uh, Helmholtz uh, coil where you have these uh, currents moving in the same direction and if you if you remember that uh, there is a the magnetic induction or the magnetic force. Uh, let me just draw a little. The magnetic force is uh, sorry the magnetic induction. So, this is the B that we are talking about and B as a function of distance. So, this magnetic induction is pretty smooth uh, that is constant between the two uh, these coils or these two Helmholtz coils. Uh, now, uh, you can just uh, make a, a sort of inverse of that that is the currents are not moving in the same direction, but they are moving in opposite direction in which case uh, instead of uh, uh, this. So, I uh, will just draw it a little here. Uh, if you make them move in two different directions then you actually have just an inverse thing where um, the constant thing does not come at the top, but uh, the it comes at the bottom or and makes like a cup. So, you load these atoms in a cup and uh, these atoms are uh, would escape uh, depending on the trap height and the more energetic atoms would uh, escape and leaving you with the less energetic atoms or the cooler atoms, the atoms that are colder and uh, these would you know uh, one uh, of the cooling techniques that is used. And uh, for example, laser cooling is used uh, little can be said about it that um, you know. Um, so, when there are uh, this uh, atom has a natural frequency omega naught. So, this is the natural frequency what it means is that uh, the energy levels are uh, simply uh, differ by h cross omega 0 the intrinsic energy levels of the atom they differ by uh, 
omega uh, h cross omega 0 and omega is the uh, em radiation frequency that is the laser light okay so if you put it in that then the probability that uh, it will absorb the radiation is given by so this probability is given by this 1 by omega minus omega naught um, and a plus minus i gamma by 2 where gamma is uh, the it is called as a natural line width or uh, it is uh, related to the lifetime of this um, of this atom natural line width basically the width of the spectral lines and uh, you know now if you think of uh, the atom to be moving uh, then the Doppler effects come into picture. So, if an atom is moving towards uh, the laser source uh, then it will be its frequency increases and um, uh, this it will be it is called blue shifted and if it is uh, moving away from the laser then the frequency goes down and it is called as a red shifted it is just pretty similar to if you are moving towards a train or uh, and then the train is honking uh, the the sound of the you know the uh, horn uh, that would uh, seem like either it is increased or decreased uh, depending on whether you are moving towards the train or moving away from the train a similar thing happens. But what importantly happens is that there is a frequency shift which is called as a Doppler frequency shift which is of the form which is v dot k where v is the uh, velocity and k is the wave vector and uh, so eventually you know this uh, denominator of this uh, this probability of absorption so this uh, looks like uh, omega minus omega naught minus a v dot k and then a plus minus i gamma by 2 okay this by 2 is just a convention and uh, so uh, because of doppler effect we see a detuning parameter uh, which is uh, this detuning parameter is called as minus gamma plus gamma 0. So, if you define a delta prime which is equal to a delta plus uh, this d omega or this minus delta omega. So, this becomes equal to delta plus v dot k. Okay. So, uh, this is called as a detuning uh, parameter and and so on. So, this is the Doppler effect that comes. Now, if you have two counter propagating laser beams uh, then um, you know so one will have uh, so for two of them so you have one uh, this uh, Doppler shift will be equal to delta plus uh, you know uh, k uh, v and so on and for the other one you will have this delta minus k v and so on and then there is a, a net uh, you know uh, reduction in momentum. So, reduction in momentum will be twice of that of the atom. is twice of this k uh, and v and this means that uh, the overall uh, the momentum goes down the kinetic energy goes down and hence the temperature goes down. Okay. So, this is uh, called as a laser cooling as I said that these are uh, very important uh, things uh, discoveries which had actually uh, made this uh, realization of Bose-Einstein condensates possible. Anyway, as I said that they are not uh, really part uh, of a statistical mechanics course, but it is also good to know because this ultra cold atoms and the physics of ultra cold atoms they play a very important role in simulating many quantum phenomena okay. and uh, there are these there are uh, this uh, quantum sensing, quantum information, quantum uh, information there I mean this, uh, quantum computation etcetera they are uh, emerging fields and a lot of these uh, important discoveries are linked to uh, iron traps and these uh, condensates Bose-Einstein condensates, uh, cold atomic traps of different geometries and so on. Okay. So, we shall uh, stop here with uh, this Bose-Einstein condensation and finish up two uh, small uh, topics in uh, ideal Bose gas and uh, they are uh, called as a black body radiation. Uh, 
you might have studied it in uh, your first quantum mechanics course. Uh, which uh, actually as I said earlier in one of the earlier lectures that this is really the, the first time uh, that uh, it was felt that this uh, classical theory or the semi-classical theory is not working and there has to be um, a new uh, line of thought that would uh, you know is required for this black body radiation to be explained. Okay. So, we are talking about a black body and a black body means that uh, there are three things. Uh, so, uh, let us call it as a you know when an electromagnetic uh, wave falls on a material uh, then uh, R uh, three things can happen that R it is uh, uh, it is reflected with this amplitude okay, and um, uh, or it is transmitted with this amplitude T. Uh, or it is absorbed with amplitude A. So, so this is uh, when electromagnetic radiation falls on a black body and what happens is that this R plus T plus A should be equal to 1 for the conservation uh, principle and uh, for a black body um, these uh, all these two uh, both of them. Uh, so, you have R equal to T equal to 0 and A equal to 1. So, this is called as a it is perfectly absorbed and that is why it is called as a black body. Okay. So, we are just simply talking about you know uh, electromagnetic radiation or light and so on whose uh, energy versus momentum is given by E k equal to C into P or it is written as H C and a k uh, magnitude of that. So, you can simply write it as h cross c k. So, the uh, one important uh, difference between what we have done so far with Bose Einstein condensation is that uh, we had a k square dispersion. So, these are non relativistic particles, but these are the photons are ultra relativistic particles whose uh, uh, you know the dispersion is given by linear in k. And we also know that the chemical potential of photons are uh, this is 0, chemical potential is equal to 0 and uh, the reason we have stated earlier at least uh, twice uh, saying that because the number of photons cannot be conserved. Uh, so, uh, we do not need a constraint condition linked to the number conservation and that is why that particular um, Lagrange's undetermined multiplier equal to 0 and that is why mu is put equal to 0. So, uh, we will not uh, go uh, into uh, a lot of details, but uh, we write from the grand canonical partition function as this uh, as we have started you know even uh, working with your uh, p v over k t. So, I am just writing the relevant part uh, of it. So, p v over k t was linked to uh, log z, we have shown that how the grand potential is related to log z and so on z g uh, in the grand canonical ensemble and this is log of uh, 1 minus exponential minus of beta epsilon k and uh, this is equal to p v over k t. This is the starting point we have said that uh, a number of times in fact, we started from this when we uh, started dealing with uh, the ideal Bose gas okay. that is p v over k t. Now, uh, you have to convert this sum into an integral, but I leave that to you to figure out what is the density of states uh, for a three dimensional system whose dispersion is not k square. In k square it was epsilon to the power half, uh, you have to figure out what it is for this uh, linear dispersion and when you do that you would get that this log of z g is nothing but a minus of uh, there is a minus sign. Uh, yeah, I put that. So, minus 4 pi v divided by h c over whole cube and this 0 to infinity d epsilon epsilon square log of 1 minus exponential minus beta epsilon. Okay. So, basically even here you know it does not cost any energy um, for a large arbitrary number of particles to be in the uh, epsilon equal to 0 state, uh, but this divergence of uh, you know the epsilon equal to 0 state occupancy uh, has got no effect 
on the physical properties for photons. So, there is no nothing like a condensation phenomena that occurs for uh, photons. Okay. Um, so, this is nothing but if you try to solve this integral, you can do it by parts and we have told number of times you should take epsilon square as the first function. Uh, sorry, log uh, of this uh, 1 minus exponential minus beta epsilon as a first function and epsilon square as a second function and do a biparts integral and it will give you uh, a simple uh, expression which is log of 1 minus exponential minus beta uh, epsilon uh, and uh, epsilon cube by 3 uh, from 0 to infinity and you have the second term which is this uh, du dv uh, integral of v dx whole dx that is uh, exponential minus beta uh, this and 1 minus exponential minus beta epsilon d epsilon and so on. Okay? And now this uh, as earlier this is equal to 0 because um, at the lower limit this term goes to 0 and at the upper limit that is infinity this log term goes to 0 because uh, of uh, you know uh, this term goes to 0 and log of 1 is 0. Okay? So, uh, we uh, are left with only this term and that is uh, simple to deal with because this would eventually give me a Bose-Einstein integral of uh, uh, with some argument which we should be able to figure out what it is and uh, so this is equal to 0 to infinity and this epsilon cube d epsilon and e to the power beta epsilon minus 1. Okay? Uh, so, this is the pressure and uh, we know how to calculate the internal energy and the internal energy is nothing but uh, this uh, u uh, at a constant t and v this is nothing but k uh, and epsilon k divided by e to the power beta epsilon k minus 1. Note that uh, we have not written mu because mu is identically equal to 0. So, uh, it is a 4 pi v divided by h c whole cube and integral of 0 to infinity uh, d epsilon epsilon cube uh, e to the power beta epsilon minus 1. Now, you see the pressure expression and this expression uh, are uh, nearly same with just a factor of 1 over 3 and we have said this uh, result before that you uh, really have uh, uh, this uh, u and p that is the internal energy and the pressure they carry the same information. So, p is equal to uh, number times uh, you know some number times u by v and this number is equal to 1 by 3 for relativistic case and this is equal to 2 by 3 for non-relativistic case. Okay? So, that is all that you have. So, here we will write a 1 over 3. So, uh, now with uh, if you change x equal to beta epsilon then log of z g uh, at t v which is equal to p v over k t. Uh, this is nothing but equal to 4 pi v by h c cube and 2 over beta cube and a g 4 1 which is the Bose Einstein integral. So, if you compare you get a, a this g 4 1 and this uh, just to remind you that this g n z f uh, this is equal to 1 over gamma n uh, and you have a 0 to infinity x to the power n minus 1 dx and z f inverse e to the power x minus 1. So, uh, we can use the uh, this z, uh, g 4 of 1 which is nothing but a gamma 4 which has a value pi 4 by 90 we have shown that earlier that this is uh, just a value of the Bose-Einstein condensate, uh, I mean the inst integral sorry not the Bose-Einstein, this is a Bose-Einstein um, integral and this is u by v which is 8 pi by h c cube uh, pi to the power 4 by 90 and k t to the power 4 and this is called as the Stefan Boltzmann law or uh, more familiar of it if you uh, calculate the uh, emissive uh, power or 
the energy density of radiation uh, which is uh, you know if you simply uh, divide this quantity uh, by the speed of light you will get a E equal to uh, some 4 by C uh, sigma t to the power 4 and this is known as the Stefan Boltzmann law and this sigma uh, is called as the Boltzmann and sigma is called as the uh, Stefan Boltzmann constant. I will just write it uh, in brief uh, and it has a value which is 5.67 into 10 to the power minus 8 watts per meter square Kelvin to the power 4. Okay. So, this is called as the Stefan Boltzmann law gives you the emissive uh, power or emissive energy density associated with the electromagnetic radiation of a black body. Okay. Um, now, uh, finally, we will uh, talk about um, phonons uh, or uh, the specific heat due to phonons or uh, these are called as the sound waves um, and uh, these sound waves because you know if you uh, just to remind you that if you solve a, a, a diatomic chain problem then uh, what you get is that uh, you get uh, the acoustic modes as like this and they will go as like this uh, and uh, the optical modes are like this. So, this is the Brillouin zone pi over a and minus pi over a. Uh, and we are really interested in this region, uh, in this region where uh, these are called as the acoustic modes because omega is proportional to k or the frequency is proportional to k. Okay. And um, of course, Einstein uh, did a mistake and Einstein actually got a temperature dependence of the specific heat to be completely wrong. In fact, he uh, got some quite complicated is 1 over t square. Uh, exponential minus 1 over t that kind of a dependence. So, Einstein's result I will uh, not go th through it. It was done when we uh, did this uh, harmonic oscillators uh, you know independent harmonic oscillators calculate the partition function calculated free energy and then the specific heat. So, Einstein's uh, formula or Einstein's result was uh, wrong because he um, assumed that all the uh, this uh, lattice uh, points or all the ions are they, they are vibrating with the same uh, natural frequency um, which means here the model for a solid is that we have ions there and they are connected by springs. So, they would undergo harmonic uh, vibration either it can go in the plane or it can go above the plane and in plane there are two modes longitudinal and transverse and then you have the out of plane uh, movements etcetera. Not longitudinal and transverse. So, in the plane you have one along x maybe and the one along y that is what I meant. Okay. So, uh, this result that Einstein got I will not derive that it was derived earlier. So, this was like a 3 r and a theta E by T there is a low temperature behavior. High temperature uh, both uh, you know Einstein and Debye were correct that it goes as 3 R, uh, but um, there is no temperature dependence there. So, this is uh, the, the thing that Einstein got and theta E some Einstein temperature which is like um, uh, this is like theta E is that you know H cross omega by K or something. Okay. So, this result uh, is like 1 over t square into e to the power minus 1 over t. This is wrong because uh, experimentally it was found that, that the low temperature behavior is like t cube okay? and this is called as a device theory. So, we will just quickly uh, do device theory and uh, be done with this ideal Bose gas. Uh, the important thing is that uh, you know uh, why does one need the specific heat. Uh, so, the experimentalist needs specific heat because it is a uh, it is a response it's a linear response. So, if you increase the temperature by 1 degree how much of heat is required that is called as a specific heat. So, uh, and this uh, behavior of specific heat with temperature is an important thing um, it, it shows phase transition for example, you know uh, 
these phase, uh, these superconductors, they show a drop or the discontinuity in specific heat and so on. And we have seen here also that the specific heat has a kink like structure uh, at t equal to Tc. So, it is an important quantity and um, you do it in solid state physics. So, I will uh, not repeat it much, but I will simply say that you have this uh, E to be like a Cs into P and now the Cs is called as a speed of sound or a velocity of sound. Okay, and of course, not light. Uh, so, C v will be a del u del t uh, at a constant v and this is like a 3 n k um, h cross omega beta square uh, e to the power beta h cross omega e to the power beta h cross omega minus 1 uh, square. So, this is the, the C v that comes and then you can take a low temperature limit and a high temperature limit. High temperature as I said will give you uh, 3 r and the low temperature it will uh, reproduce the T cube formula. Uh, so, the density of states for phonons. So, uh, this Debye made a, a important contribution is a volume and this omega square divided by 2 pi square. C L cube, C L is the longitudinal velocity of this sound and it is uh, pi, pi square C T cube. So, that is the density of states and um, uh, C L is the longitudinal speed of sound, C T is the transverse speed of sound and uh, has a cutoff at omega equal to omega D and this uh, mistake that Einstein made where he assumed that all of them have one frequency. Okay? Ha however, there is no, uh, is, is not one frequency, but there is some frequency which has got a cutoff. Okay? I am showing only uh, uh, schematically. So, this g of omega has some cutoff there where it is uh, sort of you know uh, the smooth function uh, is uh, written here like uh, omega square, but with uh, you know uh, there are combination of two terms. Okay, so, uh, this d is called as a Debye frequency okay? and uh, once uh, one when uh, one actually integrates over omega d one get 3 n number of modes and uh, this is equal to 3 n that gives a Debye frequency to be equal to 18 pi square. So, if you solve this put this g omega here and solve for this from 0 to omega d or rather integrate from 0 to omega d and equate it to 3 n, where 3 n is a number of modes, phonon modes that we are talking about. Basically, the uh, energies, the phonon energies are uh, this many uh, in three dimensions. So, this is um, 18 pi square n over v and uh, we have 1 over C L cube plus 2 over C T cube whole to the power inverse. Okay? So, now I know omega d. So, we can calculate u uh, T v n. Uh, this is equal to 9 n h divided by omega d cube 0 to omega d uh, d omega and we have 1 by exponential beta h cross omega minus 1 plus half uh, omega cube. So, g omega putting the value of um, uh, these. Uh, so, this is 9 omega square by omega d cube. So, it is omega square variation for omega less than equal to omega d and that is equal to 0 for omega greater than omega d. So, okay. so c the specific heat is equal to del u del t uh, and v n this is equal to 9 n h cross square by omega d cube uh, k t square. Uh, these are uh, you have to do it once uh, in order to convince yourself and uh, there is some um, uh, some omega d and then there is omega to the power 4 exponential beta h cross omega divided by exponential beta h cross omega minus 1 whole square. And um, if you uh, replace x equal to beta h cross omega, uh, then what you get is you get a simplified form for this. 
in terms of an integral and then one can actually have a exact form of the integral uh, and this is like a 0 to some x 0 uh, dx uh, x to the power 4 e to the power x divided by e to the power x minus 1 whole square. Uh, so, if you define a Debye function Um, d of x 0 which is this integral 2 divided by x 0 cube uh, 0 to x 0 uh, d x x to the power 4 e to the power x uh, e to the power x minus 1 whole square uh, with x 0 as h cross omega d by k t. So, one gets uh, c v equal to 3 n k d of x 0. Okay? So, this is the form that one has and at high t that is at high temperature uh, d of x 0 is equal to 1. So, that gives C v equal to 3 n k or 3 r and uh, at uh, low temperature or very low temperature. Uh, d of x 0 goes as t cube. So, this gives the C v going as t cube which is correct okay? and this is called as the device theory. All right. So, uh, we uh, wind up our discussion on the study of ideal bosons and um, we have done a number of things Bose-Einstein condensation um, and its properties that what happens when there is a macroscopic accumulation of particles in the ground state of the system. Then we have done uh, these uh, black body radiation and hence the phonons. We have done these uh, phonons and black body radiations in hurry because you already know that in the context of uh, either quantum mechanics or solid state physics. So, uh, the results are important nevertheless, but the condensation phenomena was uh, new to you and it is uh, one of the main uh, topics of discussion in statistical physics. I will stop here and we will carry on with discussions on Fermi systems in the next class. Thank you. Mm -hmm.